Alrighty. So today we're mainly going to focus on like our cause of stress, the link between, you know, stress and just chronic disease in general, um, and ways to reduce and cope with stress. So, um, it'll be a lot of you guys like sharing what you do, um, sort of maybe spark an idea for somebody else. Um, but to get into it, I mean, stress is natural, right? Um, we get it from all over the place. Um, everyone has different triggers for stress and everybody feels and experiences stress differently, right? Um, it's a positive thing when we're using it to like be productive, like accomplish goals, um, when it's managed. Um, but when it's uncontrolled, that's when stress can sort of get to us and sort of impact, you know, our physical and mental health, right? Um, so I just want to get into it and be like, what are some of the things that cause you guys the most stress? Um, and we'll go from there. So for me personally, um, school and studying, um, I'm, I'm sort of a perfectionist in that aspect. So anything like school related, academic related, um, performance related, that causes me a lot of stress, which is a lot of what I'm doing right now. Um, and then, you know, there's just the natural, you know, you got family drama and, and stuff like that as well. Um, but what about you guys? I've got a lot of stress causing things in my, my life right yeah. now, but yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I think I, you know, I have that list of things, unending things in my head and when mm -hmm. it gets too full, it, I tend to get a bit anxious. Yeah. That in, feeling in of general. overwhelm, right? Yeah. Just... Like my, currently my, I mean, in addition to I've got court dramas and all kinds of stuff I'm a single mom of two but on top of all that my boss has had COVID and she's been out of work for over four weeks now so oh, I'm doing wow. two people's jobs as well so it's just those things where you can't ever have enough hours in the day I think Absolutely. it's probably one of the bigger ones for me you brought up COVID and how that's affecting you but just the pandemic in general like that's it's, it's been two years since it started, but it's still probably affecting, you know, it affected us a lot in the beginning with the shutdown, um, but now we're still kind of recovering from it and it's still going on. So um, I think that's been huge for everybody. Everyone's experienced that in their own way as well. Um, some other ones, Does any of you have anything else to add? I don't have this issue anymore, but relationships. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Even like family, friends, significant other, like relationships add stress, you know, when they're great, when they're good, they're great. When they're not so good, they, you know, they cause that extra stress on us. Um, I would also say like finances are big. Um, for me and for a lot of people, I think when finances get tight, we get, you know, stressed out. It's natural. Um, what else? Job searching. I'm currently searching for um, a job in the clinic somewhere. Um, I'll still stay on with CLF and everything, but that's, that's a big one for me right now. And just career in general. I know um, my clients face a lot of stress from just their jobs, day-to-day -day work life balance, um, especially when you all have kids and you're super busy bees. Um, but yeah, I think we hit quite a bit of, you know, what people experience from day to day. So when you are stressed, what do you guys feel like physically, mentally, can you guys put a finger on it? Like, have you ever been mindful to it? Um, I know a lot of us like know when we're stressed, but can you put a finger on like some of your symptoms of stress? I haven't managed mine. It will manifest in a migraine. Okay. How long does it take for that migraine to sort of go away? Um, so like the actual migraine is like, 
a day, but like I have to sleep it off. Like it will physically incapacitate me. Okay. But then it's, I'd say three days to like really recover. It's kind of like a fog for three days after. Oh, wow. Does that happen frequently? Um, twice a year. Okay. Um, it's a, like I had one, normally it happens like in the fall. because That's my most stressful time for work. Okay. Um, but I actually had one happen in June right after we moved. Um, okay. so that was, that was super unpleasant. <laughs> right. Well, you had all that stress from the move and changing everything. So mm -hmm. with a newborn, so, but yeah, um, I've heard a lot of people say that they manifest into migraines, like if things get too much, um, can you feel it coming on? Like, is there a way you can catch it before it happens or is it like, it's too late? We sort of just have to go through it. Um, like I can tell when it's like that type of a headache. And if I take my medicine soon enough, sometimes it will at least take the edge off that I can continue to function. Um, but normally it's, by the time I realize it is typically too late, like it's, I'm nauseated at that point. Okay. Gotcha. And I just have to go to bed. <laughs> gotcha. No, that makes sense. So the trick for you is to try to maintain stress as much as possible to prevent that, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else experience anything physical, mental? Uh, I'm a nail biter. And oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> and I also I get like the like tight I mean, it's anxiety related, but I like tightness in my chest and like yes. you gotta take a full breath. <laughs> um, I I also feel that tightness that you feel like chest. I feel like my shoulders are like up in my ears just feel really tight in the neck um some other things that people tend to experience are like racing heartbeat I know like with more anxiety my heart tends to race a little bit or it'll even skip a beat or get some chest pains if I don't control it um or just tight muscles like you said and an upset stomach so Ashley mentioned that with her migraine um but I don't know, has stress ever affected your guys' appetite before? Like I've had stress go to the point where I didn't eat for four days straight. Okay. okay. Just due to work. Um, I work from 8 to 7 p.m., so 11 hours a day. Six days a week usually. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I make myself not work Saturdays just because it gets to be too much. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to work on it, but... <laughs> It's been rough. Yeah, that's a crazy schedule. So are you, like, has your appetite, does it just completely go away and you're just not hungry? I just can't eat. Like, yeah, I went and tried to, like, get shakes to help me. Mm -hmm. It literally made my stomach in knots and I wanted to throw up. Um, I would try literally everything, like soup and things like that. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't eat. I literally just wanted to throw up every time I put something into my body oh my goodness does that happen frequently for you no I just experienced it for the most part like two weeks ago okay so it was, it was a little nerve-wracking added more stress because I knew I needed nutrients for my body but I just couldn't get it in right yeah definitely um so like you did what I would encourage you to do, like eat bland, small portions. Um, but it sounds like we've got to sort of work on getting our stress controlled before the four days of not eating happens, right? And I know that's like super hard to do. Um, easier said than done, right? Um, but I was, this was gonna go into our next question of what do you guys do to manage stress? I'm still working on that part. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have something you've tried before? I never hit a level of bad extreme stress up until two weeks ago. Okay. And then it was just like, what is going on? Right. Um, 
And at that point, it's almost like an outer body experience, right? Like we don't feel like we're in control. Um, so before like you experience that extreme level of, you know, stress, like what were you doing before to just mitigate your normal day-to-day -day stress with work-life balance? Um, Anything that comes to mind? I literally just kind of shoved everything down. Okay. Just kept packing it in until I kind of like just snapped a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do that. It's like avoidance behaviors. Like if we don't recognize the feeling and shove it down, right? Like we don't have to think about it or feel it, or we can just keep going. Um, I mean, you're exercising regularly. I know that. Um, so do you think exercise helps you at all just with stress or? Uh, yeah, um, it definitely helps me. It makes me feel like better. Um, I actually haven't worked out in probably two weeks during that time frame as well, just to kind of alleviate stress and try to get sleep. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep. Um, so it was just a work in progress for me. Yeah, um, absolutely. And if we ever get to like the levels of stress that you were feeling, like working out is probably going to make things worse because your body's already under like super super stress like attack mode you know oh yeah so i think it was great that you took some time off um just to reset rest yourself rest your body rest your mind um but yeah um it's definitely a work in progress for all of us um just trying to figure out what works best for us um do any of you do any stress management on the regular that you could maybe suggest, like Kristen and Ashley? I do, I'll have to weigh in in a moment. Okay, that's okay. Um, so a few things that I like to do, especially um, if I'm feeling overwhelmed is to make like an itemized task list of the day, you know? Um, I tend to overshoot, write like 25 things, but then I number three to four things that are like non-negotiables and I can cross those off my list and whatever I can push tomorrow, like that's okay. Like I still made progress for that day. Well, um, but I definitely think um, sort of itemizing your day helps just like with managing the overwhelm feeling um, and doing like the next big thing um, and then, I don't know, exercise is great for me and just to keep my head clear. Um, so when I'm like eating well and exercising regularly, um, I, ha I wake up with a clearer mind, I'm sleeping better, um, and what have you. Does anyone have anything to add so far? I mean, I know we really worked on in the beginning for me just taking like 10 minutes for myself a day yes. like, because I do everything for everybody else. Absolutely. And how do you think it's helped you? Yeah, it's definitely like this more of like a routine and I'm just like, I literally just like lock my bedroom door at this point <laughs> so nobody can come in because um, but that, then that's just my time. Yeah. Like, so it does help. Like I can just kind of like breathe for a minute and just do what I need to do. Um, and Ashley, can you like explain a little bit of like what you do during those 10 minutes? It might change every day um, just to share with everybody else. So it just depends. Like sometimes I'll do like a face mask or like just lay in bed and like read a book or just like binge watch my TV for a little bit just something that's just me and not not for my husband not for my kids not for work just something that like makes me feel good um and do you typically do it morning or night I know this answer but I figured it could help normally night okay <laughs> um yeah so she's done a really good job of finding just a little bit of time even if it's 10 minutes like she said um 
to later, you know, sometime just to regroup before bed, like collect her thoughts, give some time back to herself. Cause like she said, she does take care of her, like everyone all day, whether it's at work or home. Um, and we found that, you know, when you're pouring from an empty cup, it's completely draining. Right. So even 10 to 30 minutes to yourself can make a very big difference. Um, and that 10 to 30 minutes can be something that you find refreshing. Doesn't have to be a face mask. Some people like to read. Some people like to listen to music, take a bath. Um, just something that can sort of help you find that reset. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I agree. And I, I also want to add that, like, I find that, <laughs> like, routine helps, too. Like. Um, you know, like every night I pick up the house and do the dishes and all of that so that, you know, I don't leave it for the next day or, you know, it's having, having those routines in place. And then I do like face care and stuff at night. And if you just get into the habit of always doing it, you always make that time, you know, to have things done and, and have your own time. So you don't right. leave it all. Yeah, and um, like it sort of lets you go to bed with an easy, clear mind, you know, like, oh, I don't have to wake up and do this in the morning, right? Um, so I think the routine, like you said, like helps you get in what you want to get in every day, you know, to manage your lifestyle, um, hit your goals, and, you know, take care of everything around the house as well. So routine is huge, um, and I think with COVID, that was a big deal for a lot of people being thrown off their routine and then trying to find it again, especially with a lot of people working from home. So um, I've had friends who have, you know, written out time to time, like during that COVID time, just to maintain a routine and keep some of their sanity. They wrote out everything that they were going to do for the day by the time, just like they would be at work and everything. So um, routines are very important for people, especially, you know, for productivity and just feeling that sense of like accomplishment during the day. So I think that was a really good point to add. Um, let's see. Um, other things. Actually, I missed a question back before, but when you guys feel stressed, um, do you tend to do fall into certain behaviors? Um, whether good or bad, like if you feel stress, do you, you tend to go to the fridge? Do you tend to forget things or, you know, put off some things that you might want to do? Um, just behaviors. Have you guys recognized when we're stressed, this tends to go first or we tend to lean on this instead? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I'll be the first to say that I, um, well, I've been through some really stressful situations, and in those situations, I tend to drink more, <laughs> not gonna lie, an extra glass of wine here and there to right. artificially relax myself when I can't manage it. Yeah, and I think that's very common. Um, a lot of my clients, patients in the past, they've gone to that. I know I've seen my family members do that as well. Um, and I've done it, you know, I think everyone has that one thing that they grab. Um, and if yours is a glass of wine, um, it definitely helps relax you. But if we keep, you know, if we tend to rely on that more, then it's sort of like that false sense of, like you said, false sense of relaxation long-term. But um. I don't know, for me, I, I definitely am way more forgetful if I'm under a lot of stress. Like if I don't have it written down, it's probably not gonna get done. Um, it's gonna slip my mind. Other things are gonna take precedence just because um, you're sort of on fight or flight mode at that point. Um, but some of you say you eat less. Do some of you tend to eat a little bit more or do you find yourself doing both just depending on like the situation? I know I've done both in like really, really stressful situations. Like, I mean, I went 
through some trauma earlier this year and I could barely eat for probably two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, I comfort ate. <laughs> so I like lost seven pounds, mostly water weight, of course, and then put them all right back on mm-hmm. from comfort eating. Yeah, and I think um, the ebbs and flows of appetite with stress come hand in hand. So like you said, in the extreme stress, and Sam was talking about this too, like it's hard to keep food down. You don't want it. Um, And I think a lot of people experience that. And then once you sort of start to process things or they might start to creep back up, um, we might reach for comfort in food instead, you know, because you're probably starving after not eating for two weeks or four days. So our body probably shifts gears a little bit and we do tend to just be a little bit more hungry and we might process our emotions that way as well. Um, But not everybody does um, that and stress doesn't always affect people's nutrition. I was just seeing what, how it affected your guys's. Um, So other things that people do when they're stressed, they may work too much. So they just power through, put their head down, keep working because the more they work, the better they feel. Um, Some people avoid work um, responsibilities just because they're just a lot of extra overwhelm at the time. Um, Some people go to smoking, um, other behaviors like that. Um, Does it affect, does stress affect sleep at all for you guys? Yeah, Yeah, I don't, I definitely don't sleep as well. You don't sleep as well. So are you going to bed later or is it like restless nights? Both. I would say more going to bed later because like I'm like cons- like making that list of what I need to do the next day in my head already. Yeah. And so like I'm up till like 11 o'clock. Okay, I have to get A, B, C, D and done because in the morning I have to do E, F, and G. Yeah. I feel that you're just like making your list for the next day. It's hard to wind down because you're thinking about tomorrow already. Um, And then does like it ever wake you up like your to-do list? Like you literally wake up and be like, oh, wait, I have to add that to the list because I've been there before too. Um, No, but when you have nightmares about work, you know, it's probably time to find a new job. (laughs) Because that was happening. (laughs) Yes. And I'm so glad you did. That's, that's awesome. Um, but anybody else have a different experience with sleep or did Ashley sort of hit it on the head? Yeah, same. I sometimes have a hard time getting to sleep and then usually sleep well, but then if I wake up and have to go to the bathroom, then I can't go to sleep because my brain decides it's going to think about all of the things in, you know, that could possibly go wrong. And, you know, the time that I accidentally went for a high five instead of a handshake in like the third grade Mm -hmm. or you know like yep everything yep (laughs) start thinking about the past and and whatnot it's just like a spiral um do any of you like catch try to catch it in its tracks and do you have like a coping mechanism to sort of slow your mind down when it's a little restless like that for sleep I I I can't sleep um I was just recently prescribed insomnia pills so I, I can get sleep. Okay. But I'm actually starting to find that they're not working for me. Like okay. I will still be restless throughout the night. Okay. So you're just like, your thoughts are just way too much. Like your go, 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 hard to slow down. Yes, exactly. Okay. Have you reached out to your physician? Yeah, he hasn't got back with me yet. Okay. Okay. That's frustrating. Um, but yeah, I would definitely mention that to them and see if they could maybe switch the medication or up your dosage, um, safely and everything. Cause that's miserable. Not being able to sleep like that. Like you need sleep. And that's what I think, um, what I guess hit my breaking point mm-hmm. is that I wasn't getting enough sleep. I was under extreme amount of stress, um, and that's how my doctor was like, we're going to try some insomnia pills so you can get to sleep. Like I can get to sleep easy, but like um, somebody said they, once they're awake, like 
once I get him to go to the bathroom or something, that's me. Like if I get up to go to the bathroom, I'm wide awake. Whether I go to bed fairly early. Okay. Just so I can get things done for me before I have to start work in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I typically go to bed. It's going to sound crazy about seven thirty, eight o'clock every night. No, that's not sure. True. I have a good time frame to continue to get the sleep that I need to get. And then I typically wake up between, I was waking up at 4.30, but they told me not to wake up at 30, 4.30 anymore. My doctors did. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, it makes sense. So now I've been getting up between like five and 5.30. Okay. Um, like this morning, I didn't get any sleep last night. So when my alarm went off, I just turned it off and let myself sleep. And I slept until eight o'clock. Okay. Well, that's good on nights like that. I definitely think you should sleep in versus like get your steps in and exercise in the morning like you have been. Yeah. Um, But um, I definitely think you made a good point. Like when you said sleep definitely takes a toll, right? Like when we're stressed and we're not sleeping, we're not eating, like our body's sort of just like in that downward spiral, just trying to like take a breath of air, you know? And I think like the less we sleep, like the more we sort of lose that grip on like reality and just like um, your emotions <laughs> yes your emotions exactly that's what I'm getting at so it's easy it's it's like very easy to have like a snapping point you know um, and I'm sorry you've been through so much stress um, it's just I I Ben, I don't understand exactly what you're going through, but I feel like I've been at a point like that and it's just not very fun. So my heart goes out to you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a lot of trouble for a lot of months this year sleeping. Um, and same thing when I couldn't get to sleep or I couldn't go back to sleep at night, I would like, I, I started trying to uh visualization Mm -hmm. and it it works for me now I kind of feel like I've trained myself to like I I I don't know I have this like one scene in my head that's like I don't know like a lake between mountains and then I like think about what the sounds would be and like what I'd feel and everything and usually that helps me drift off yeah that's awesome yeah yeah I, I kind of do something similar except I don't picture something I just picture blackness and that's what helps for me because normally I'll just be thinking through those scenarios so if I picture blackness that's what kind of helps me yeah yeah mine's thinking. like mine's like mine's like the feeling of floating and like the noises you know like just yeah I don't know drifting like I guess happy place like a yeah yeah did you like did it take a while for you to yeah it took space for that like did you use guided meditation or anything no I had just been I'd just been like reading different like methods and one said like pick you know pick something that's like I I can't remember how they described it but like um like like hits your hits all your senses Mm -hmm. you know something that you can like imagine um what it smells like what it sounds like what it feels like um you know how you feel internally like some some kind of scenario or even object that you you can have some kind of connection to that way and it like um and you go through all the senses kind of like in guided meditation where like you know it tells you to like tense certain parts of your body and that kind of thing Mm -hmm. it like forces your brain to you know I guess focus on something yeah focus on something else other than like your stress right um but no I visualization is so powerful um I used to swear by it when I played sports now it sounds silly but visualizing yourself hitting a ball and going out and actually doing it it helped me just alleviate some of the tension I always felt when I played sports um So with sleep, I think that's a great idea if someone's looking for a way to calm down because you are forced to focus your senses on other things versus what you have to do tomorrow or the next day. Um, Visualization, guided meditation, there's so many things on YouTube um, and I could send them in the WhatsApp group if you guys would be interested. 
um, just short videos. They don't even have to be long. Um, there's meditation apps. Um, I've used Headspace before, and you can pick a series of different voices, um, different med meditation, pretty much journeys um, that you could click on before bed. Um, and then what else? Do you guys have anything else to add to that? Even um, like if you have like a Amazon Echo or something like that, you can tell Alexa to play guided meditation and it'll play it for you. Or you can ask it to play like, you know, I don't know, water sounds or whatever. Yeah. So like a uh, white noise. Yeah, that's a great point. I didn't think about the Alexa. Um, I've never tried that, but um, it would be so easy just to be like, yo, Alexa, like pop this on for me. Um, I used it. My daughter used to use it. That's when she couldn't sleep. So, okay. yeah. And you also brought up white noise. And I don't know if any of you, maybe Sam, if you have a noise maker at home, um, they have them on your phone for free. There's like literally white noise apps. Um, or you can put a like a Spotify playlist together of white noise, or they have them already made. You can play it at night. Um, sometimes that helps me just like relax a little bit as well. Um, I, ha I have a white noise machine for my son that I bought off of Amazon for like, well, actually I have two of them now because I had one at the sitters, but um, they're like 22 bucks and it had like, you know, it has like 15 different sounds and it doesn't like, it doesn't loop. So there's no like, um, there's no break in it. So, cause I use it for him too. Yeah. So if you find that it works, you can always buy a little thing. You just push a button. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, would you mind linking that sometime? Yeah. Tonight? Okay. Just mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, I know also reading can help just slow your mind down, help you think about something else. Um, read what you like to read that you're interested in. So it might pull your attention. Like you can actually get into the book and fall asleep reading the book. Um, I don't know if any of you are religious, but praying can help slow your mind down. Um, if you're not religious, like manifesting or um, whatever you may do. Um, but those things can definitely help um, just take your mind off the current situation and put it on like others or just other parts of your body. So I've actually been um, doing a lot more coloring. I know that sounds crazy at 30 years old. I'm coloring and coloring books, but it has helped me tremendously. Oh, like really? I can focus on just coloring rather than what everything else is going on. Yeah, that's awesome. I turn my phone off and I just color for like an hour or whatever. That's awesome. Um, are they like adult coloring books with like the intricate... Uh, some of them are like, I have a Bible coloring book. Okay. I have, um, I have adult, like a flower book coloring book and there's something else, animals, I think. Okay. Just so I can kind of focus my time on that sometimes throughout the week rather than um, focusing so much on work and whatever else is going on in my life. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I think coloring is like, like any type of art. Um, it's not mindless, but you can just like focus on the colors, putting it together, like designing. Um, and it does take your time and attention. So like music, coloring, um, if you like to draw, if you like to write, journaling is a great way to get your feelings out on paper and sort of get them out from under your head, like all jumbled and get them out. And sorry, I'm saying the word out a lot. But um, <laughs> just get them out of your head and onto paper. And that helps a lot of people as well, even if it's for five to 10 minutes. Um, but I'm glad you, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Coloring is such a great idea. Um, yeah, I've done that before too. Like when I feel like I mindlessly want to like scroll through my phone or like Facebook or something, doing that instead seems more productive. Yeah. <laughs> I think it affects your mental as well, like just shutting the phone off and doing pen and paper things um, or just reading. Um, the constant stimulation makes our mind continue to go and always want to be stimulated. So if we take a break from that and we, um, you know, slow time down by doing something you love, like coloring, 
that that's awesome. I think that's a huge way to manage stress or even just cope with stress. Um, anyone else have anything to add with like slowing the mind down to help sleep? Okay. A bath. A bath. Yeah. I have a hot tub. That help. I, that always relaxes me. Oh, nice. I would love a hot tub. Um, yeah, just like the hot water for sure. Do you, any of you have bath bombs or just something to watch like dissolve in the water? I have like, I use Epsom salt quite often. I have a mm -hmm. stress relief Epsom salt pack. Mm -hmm. I think it was like it was a big bag and I think I paid like all of five dollars for it for it for Walmart okay. and it definitely has helped um it's definitely helped me feel more relaxed I also drink a cup of tea every night before I go to bed okay just to kind of loosen up my body from sitting yeah. here in front of my laptop and in my computer chair all day my body gets tight especially in my shoulders and then the stress add on top of it, it it's literally like so tight so I tried to loosen up that way and kind of relax some and get my get like a get good sleep then yeah that's awesome Epsom salt I've heard has a lot of benefits I'll have to look them up to be like very specific about them um but I've heard great things about it um especially like anything eucalyptus like herb related especially with eucalyptus that's supposed to really help calm the nerves calm the stress help you relax um has anyone you said you like to loosen up like your shoulders get tight do any of you like to do yoga or any type of stretching I'll do some stretching um especially after a workout when I do a hard workout but I'm not a big yoga fan it's too slow pace for me mm -hmm. yeah I kind of like, like lifting the weights and moving and whatever I feel but the same way <laughs> yeah. yoga is just like Okay, it stresses me out more because it's so slow for me. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, I think picking up heavy shit and putting it down um, is very stress relieving. Um, it lets out a lot, lets off a lot of steam, right? And mm -hmm. yoga, you're not so hot, sweaty, out of breath, um, but it does force you to slow down. I know it's uncomfortable, um, and I'm not saying it has to be your jam. But it definitely, when I go, my mind's always like, okay, like, when are we going to do the next stretch? Like, what's going on? And then once I really slow my mind down and buy into, like, what, what's going on and just focusing on breath, I actually do feel a lot better when I go. Um, it's just sort of like a learned, you have to, like, learn to, like, shut it off. And it's not always easy, and I don't always do it. Um, but it's a good challenge for my mind, at least. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same side as you, Kinsey. Um, yeah. <laughs> it took me a while to get used to it. Mm -hmm. And my mind would always wonder, so I'd have to bring it back. But once I got used to kind of that slower movement and be more mindful in the moment, it would help me as well. Yeah, I, I agree. And I feel like once you sort of get the gist of like what some of the basic moves are and you're not looking at everyone, like, what do I do next? Like, yeah, you're confident and you can just be in that headspace, you know? Um, I've done it, it it's overwhelming at first like it's like all right what mm -hmm. the hell is like a downward whatever so I think it's easier though in a group environment for sure <laughs> than like on your own because I find it's I mean maybe and that's the reason why I feel like it's too slow is that if I do it at home there's like too much distraction I guess mm -hmm. like at home where I'm like this is so slow I could be doing all of these things <laughs> yes and I agree. Um, I think some people, if they're like seasoned in it, it might be like easy for them to do at home. Um, but when you've got littles running around and you've got a bunch of stuff going, you know, just I think working out at home in general is challenging if you do have a lot of distractions. So I think that's a good point. Like going into a, a class or a group or going to the park with some friends, I think that really helps just like narrow your focus versus like oh shoot laundry's done I just heard the buzzer like let me pause this like whatever you know like it's easy to just move on from it um okay so real quick 
what do you guys do to try to stay on nutrition and like exercise when you guys are stressed? It's situational. Like if you're under extreme stress, right? We, we may not choose, we may listen to our body and choose not to. Um, but when we're under, like, we have some adversity going on, like, what are some ways you guys cope with that to like stick with your nutrition and exercise goals? So on the exercise goal piece, I have a rule where I will go. And if I'm still not into it 10 minutes after the fact, then I won't continue to work out. Um, or if I get halfway through and I still realize I'm distracted and now I'm putting my safety at risk with form and everything, that's mm -hmm. when I'll cut the workout short. Um, but I at least still try to do it because 99% of the time that helps me through that stress that I'm feeling. Yeah, I love that point. I saw you put that in WhatsApp, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have I one of my best friends uses the same rule and I, he's, he said it to me like the day before you had put that in there. It was really weird. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> no, but I was like the other day I was just not feeling it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to follow that rule. And I got my ass in there and I finished it because I always feel better once I start. But um, no, I love that rule. Um, and I think I'm going to tell everybody that rule from here on out because I can't take credit for it. <laughs> it's not like I came up with that on my own. I saw no. it on Instagram, but it works. <laughs> no, but you share, yeah, you sharing it with me was like the perfect day, perfect time. So I appreciated it. Um, I think I don't have as much trouble getting workouts and stuff in when I'm stressed because it's a stress reliever for the most part. Yeah. Mine's more, I have less or I have more problems with motivation when with like low energy levels. And I mean, sometimes the stress can cause that, but it's, it's more about my energy, I think. Yeah, um, I agree. It's harder to like get it done when our body's feeling like drained. Right. Um, and sometimes I don't think we need to push through the workout. Sometimes I think we're drained and rest would suit us better. Um, if we work out four times a week, or three, you could just focus on rest that one day if it works with your schedule and, and get the workout in the next day, you know? Um, but for the times we do choose to push through it, um, whether it's, you know, doing the best you can, you know, if, if you're still not feeling it, um, lower weights or even just walking is better than nothing, you know, you can sort of navigate that what's best for you and your body at the time. Um, yeah. but, like whenever, whenever I'm like on my period, I always give myself like, I go into it with like, I'm going to do the best I can, but I'm not going to try and hit PRs when I'm barely making it into the workout, you know? Right. Yeah. When your body's like hormones everywhere, just not feeling great and you're tired. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, we're not going to have our best workout every day, but if we work out when we're supposed to, and we sort of push through that, I definitely think we'll see benefits and it is a good stress reliever, like you said. So, um, does anyone else have anything to add? Like maybe with nutrition? I think nutrition was the toughest thing for me at first. Um, but what I've learned is no matter how I'm feeling, I have to eat. So I have to prioritize that. Yeah. And um, I travel a lot for work. So that of course brings on stress as well. So the more that I pre-plan, the better. And that's how I'm more successful. If I don't plan anything the day gets away from me, um, that's when my nutrition isn't prioritized and then I suffer from it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was hoping someone was going to say like planning meal prepping or just like having a plan for the day, for the week. Um, I think it's easy for us to lose track when we don't have like an intentional plan, either for exercise or for nutrition, just when we're starting our day. Like if we start our day stressed out, you know, working out could be the first thing to go or nutrition could be the first to go for some people. So I definitely think if you know you're about to have a stressful week, um, planning to the best of your ability um, is definitely beneficial. Um, but sometimes things happen unexpectedly and we're, we're not going to be perfect with either one and life happens, right? So 
reminder to give yourself grace, um, but also find that sense of grace and discipline. I think that's important for all of us. Um, so does anyone else have anything to add before I list off a few other ways to reduce some stress? And then we'll wrap up. I don't wanna keep you guys on here too long. All right. So um, for those of us feeling super overwhelmed, I think it's always a good thing to do to reach out, whether it's to a family member, friend, a professional, I think reaching out for help is huge. Um, I personally see a therapist um, at least once a month just to, you know, cleanse my chest, cleanse my mind, get stuff off my chest, and also just help like plan with my career and other things like that. Um, and we've talked about getting, you know, professional help and, and what's happened everything before. So if you are looking for that kind of support, we definitely, um, a lot of us have resources for you, um, but if not, just venting to a close friend, family member, someone you trust um, is huge. Um, I also think just keeping things in order, whether they be around the house, um, at work, your, your workspace, I think keeping things in order and like what Kristen said, just staying on top of like daily tasks so you don't have to do them tomorrow that always helps alleviate stress. Um, a lot of our stress comes from our environment, right? So if we keep things in order the way that works best for us, um, I definitely think that helps alleviate stress when you first wake up in the morning. Um, sleep, we talked about sleep a ton. Shooting for those seven to eight hours of good rest um, and winding down properly for the night to sort of set yourself up for success with that. Um, not always possible, but we always want to try, right? So shoot for the sleep, because when we lose the sleep, that's when our emotions and just, you know, thoughts can sort of take over, right? Um, and we're not as just sharp and, and ready to go, low energy, what have you. So um, the next one is, I think it's important you do things you enjoy and you have fun. Um, when we're constantly stressed about work or school or home life, kids, family, what have you, and, and we're not taking time for ourselves or doing the things that we enjoy, I think we sort of slip away from like the big picture, right? Like life, we're supposed to just enjoy it, live it to its fullest, like do things that are fun with the people we love, right? So make sure we're taking that time for ourselves, for our families, and we're going out and having a good time um, with people. Even if you have to say no to nutrition or, or work out every once in a while, like it's a balance, right? It's, it's, not, it's not good to an extreme where we don't miss anything and it's not good when we don't do anything. So we have to find a middle balance. Um, <laughs> For the next one, does anyone have any difficulty saying no? Where's my people pleasers? Do we say yes to every task? Do any of you relate to that? I say yes to everything and I hate it. <laughs> I'm awful about it at work. Yeah, I would say I'm very much like that as well. Um, personal life and just work in general. Um, I'm a people pleaser, so it's hard for me to say no, um, but I think learning to say no is super important for just like self-care, self-maintenance, self like just coping with stress. Um, even if it's like canceling plans that you've made with somebody or just like talking to your boss about certain tasks, you've got to sort of rearrange if it's possible um, I definitely think saying no when we can um, and saying yes to yourself is super important just to, you know, find that happiness and lower that stress in life. Um, the next one is to know yourself. So know your triggers, like know like what is going to cause that extra stress in your life and then come up with a plan of attack, like a plan of action. Um, if you know work's going to be super stressful one week and you know that your nutrition slips first, um, maybe come up with a plan to make lunch for work that week um, or plan at least three or four lunches for work that week. Um, 
And if it's exercise, maybe come up with a good time to work out, put your gym bag, pack your gym bag the night before, have everything ready to go. So all you have to do is walk in the gym the time that you planned it. Um, let's see. Like I said before, I talked about making a list. Um, take the things out of your head, put them on paper, and then prioritize them, right? We don't have to get everything done in one day. Um, get, the, get the most important things done for that day and save it for the rest. Um, I like to put my lifestyle things, three lifestyle, can you guys see that? I'll probably type this up so you can see it. But three lifestyle things I'm working on at the moment at the top, okay? And they're sort of like non-negotiables for the day. And it's workout, for me right now, it's workout reading and writing. Not saying you guys have to do this. This is just something that I really resonated with lately and I like to use it. So I, I write down what my workout's gonna be. Um, I write down the book and the pages that I'm gonna read. I usually try to read 10 pages every day. And then writing, I have stuff to get done for job interviews, but I try to make it more of like a lifestyle habit. So I just put that up top. Um, and then I write like my itemized task list down at the bottom. And there's a lot down there, but I starred a couple, okay? So I usually number them like one through three. Those are the ones I'm gonna attack for the day. Um, so if you like the way that is, I'll send you a, a better copy so you can see it. Um, but if not, no worries. I definitely think just like itemizing your day sort of helps with the overwhelm. Um, anyone have anything to add? I'm spitting a lot out at you. <laughs> Okay. Nope. Okay. So if you're one that is forgetful when you are stressed, make reminders, whether you have everything in your phone calendar um, or your big post-it note girl um, or whatever helps you remember things, writing things on like the fridge whiteboard or whatever you have at home. Um, remind yourself, um, timers, whatever works for you just to get the things that you want done for the day done. Um, and then make sure we're setting small doable goals. If we're one to get overwhelmed and, and want everything to be accomplished in one day, Rome wasn't built in a day um, and you're not going to either. Give yourself grace, give yourself patience and set those small realistic goals so we can stay motivated to achieve our long-term overall goals, right? Um, and then last, I, sorry. Let's see. I'm sorry, I had to share this because I saw something like, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. But they laid bricks every day. So the concept is kind of like to lay bricks throughout your day and that's going to help you get to your goals. So yes. just because you said that I had to share it. No, I love that. And it sort of ties in with what you sent in the group today with yeah. The, yeah, how we're not trying to, I mean, we're not going to lose 20 pounds in one day, right? So just like doing the small things, laying the small bricks down, like you just said, like we got to remind ourselves that this is going, this is productive and this is enough for this day, like we're setting ourselves up for success tomorrow. Um, and then lastly, just do your best to take care of your body and mind, right? Like you guys are all in a great routine of getting your steps in, doing your workouts um, and hitting whatever nutrition goals that you have. Um, you guys are all striving towards towards something you have either nutrition goals health fitness related goals so you guys are already here doing this doing the big stuff right but make sure we take care of our stress levels so we can you know find our happiness not you know take life too seriously um and just manage the stress so we don't get overwhelmed um and sort of capsize right so Find the things that work best for you, ways to wind down, ways to cope in the moment, ways to cope for like future stress. Um, find these things and really own them, take ownership of them and take ownership of your stress. So we can show up every day feeling good about ourselves and, and confident that you can navigate what's to come, so. Anyone have any questions? No, I will just add that um, I think one of the biggest things I've had to learn is just like sometimes also you just have to let things go. Like 
like you can't you can't do it all and you can't be it all and mm-hmm. I've always been a very independent person and an I'll just do it myself person but some gets to a point where you can't just do it yourself <laughs> it's just yeah. too much no I agree 100 percent and life and I have like a meme that I always uh go back to or whatever that's like you know you survived life isn't just about surviving you gotta thrive yes exactly live, live too yeah um and I definitely think that a lot of us get away from that when we're in such stress moments but I definitely liked what you said just like let go of control a little bit do your best um and that's what I meant when I'm saying like give yourself grace like not every day is going to be perfect um but if we sort of set ourselves up the best we can and attack the day the best we can, like that should be enough. Um, so with that, I don't have much else. Um, it is seven, but real quick, do you guys have anything that you do like in the moment? Like if you're feeling super anxious, overwhelmed, stressed, do you have something to sort of bring you back to, to ground you, to bring you back? I do. I, um, I made a list on my notes app of things that like make me feel better. Um, so like today, for example, I've just been feeling a little down. So I asked to FaceTime my nephews and that helps. So like little things like that. Yeah. And I asked for Snapchats of them. So, I mean, it works 100%, but I have this list so I can remember in those moments, Hey, go check your list. And these are things that are going to make you feel better and help with anxiety. That's awesome. Um, that just shows like a lot of mindfulness with like your body, your stress levels, and just knowing what makes you how ha- like feel better and happy. Um, and I think if we all sort of find a little bit more mindfulness and like what trigger uh, triggers us and how like we can, you know, cope with that, I think that's like half the battle, right? So I love that you have a list. That's amazing. Um, do any of you do any breathing mechanisms to sort of slow everything down? I just kind of started with that. Like actually Caddy sent me a link to, to somebody. Um, so I've kind of been, um, listening to his videos for some ideas, but, um, I mean, nothing I do routinely. I will say that there, I have in the past, there's like certain, um, you know, like scents or smells Mm -hmm. that, um, I feel like calm me down. So like, I don't know, I have like one perfume and one candle that I feel like really kind of, I don't know, grounds me or something. Yeah. So that helps sometimes. Um, would you mind sharing the video with us as well later that Caddy sent you? Yeah. And do you have like the name of the sense or is, um, is this something that like reminds you of happy? Yeah, no. Well, like one was like my mom's perfume that she always wore. Okay. Um, and then another one's just a candle that I got from <laughs> uh, Bath and Body Works. Awesome. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, just something to sort of jog your memory back to the present and in the moment, everything is actually okay. It's just when we're thinking of the future, that's when, or the past, that's when things, you know, sort of weigh on us. So if we bring ourselves back to the present moment, be like, what can I do to cope? Like everything's going to be okay. I think if you find a little mechanism for that, that definitely helps. Um, I like to breathe. I don't think this is scientific or anything, but I'll literally just fill my air with lungs and hold it until like I need to breathe and like let it out um and that always sort of helps me just ground myself um but yeah if you're a pep talk person there is an app called pep talk um and it has very short podcasts and I don't know if it would be something you guys would like to listen to in the moment um or even if you're just getting ready for your day but they're like one to two minute like podcasts of like and they're like a good confidence boost or a good mindset adjuster. So stretching, any anything to help you relax, like a scent, a candle, anything like that, those are helpful. Um, counting to 20 in your head, um, maybe finding a stress ball 
anything like that, I definitely encourage you guys to find something that works for you to sort of help ground you. So, um, but with that, I don't really have anything else. Um, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, it was definitely great to hear all of your perspectives. Um, and I think it's, it's helpful to the group when we all share and everyone can sort of feed off of each other. So thank you for participating. Um, if, you have yeah. any, if you have any questions, I'll stay on. Um, but if not, have a happy rest of your Monday. Um, and then we'll see you. Hugging, hugging babies also relieve oh, stress. Yes. <laughs> Unless they're screaming. <laughs> oh yeah, understandable. Mm -hmm. Bye guys. Right. Good night, Bye. everybody.